Do you remember when you developed your new product or service? At some point you discuss how you were going to get it to market. How were you going to get the customers to actually buy it? Did you develop a checklist and what did it look like to get your product to market? Some of the points that you probably checked off included your digital platform to market such as Facebook and Google Ads, maybe the brochures, website updates and signage, staff and sales training, for some a financial forecast or budget of some sort, maybe also secure the supply or the manufacturing for your product or service. Do some of those examples cover the majority of the situations that you faced? So we go to launch and then we wait to analyze the performance. A month or two later, all the costs that we've invested so far are now sunk costs. So to beef up our lackluster sales, we make a few modifications to our offering or product design, boost our advertising, speak with inspiration at the next sales meeting, and live the next month in hopeful anticipation for an improvement in sales. What's missing from our radar? What significant factor did we possibly miss or undervalue in relation to the launch of our new product? Well, how about this example? The following experience would have happened to all of us at some point. I remember a few years ago going to a concert in the park with a bunch of friends. It was a fantastic event, great music, great weather, awesome company. We all nibbled away at the various snacks and the $10 bottle of sparkling really tasted like a $100 bottle, despite the plastic glasses. And I thought to myself, blimey, did they get that price point wrong on that bottle? So now more educated in my bargain shopping, I go back to the shop and buy half a dozen more bottles of this excellent value champagne. Along comes Christmas and you guessed it, I lay on the sparkling. And you guessed it again, it tasted like cheap $10 sparkling wine. What really happened? And here's another example. 10 years ago, a now well-documented study was undertaken by the British Veterinarian Society and the findings apply to all of us and our businesses. In brief, one of the conclusions was that customer satisfaction about the vet was massively influenced by what the vet wore. Was the vet dressed as a typical vet should be dressed? The message in all of this, plus my sparkling wine story, is that it is all about the perception and experience. You have no doubt heard this expression before, we buy on emotion and justify on logic. Yet most of the messaging we give out there is all about logic. In fact, once you think about it, most of everything we do about developing and getting our product to market is all about the logic. So let's get back to my headline. If you think your customers will part with their hard earned cash to buy your product, at least in sufficient quantity to make your business efforts worthwhile, you are wrong. All customers now have a choice. In today's times, customers hold the power. They are well informed and have access to many alternatives besides your product. The purchase of your product is won or lost in the minds of your customer. So the question is, how do you influence the emotional transaction? How do you go about creating a total experience that results in a significant competitive advantage to you? How do you rate your business for completely immersing the culture of your team into understanding, living and improving the total customer experience? I ask this because your product is about the experience your customer has with your product, more than the features and benefits of the product itself. So to complete the title of this document, every product is a service. Every service is about the experience of the journey. Would you like to know more about how to improve the experience journey?